So today we'll talk about our next um, set of instructions, uh, which are multiplications and divisions. I think so far we tried um, addition, subtraction, and many different operations, including uh, shift and rotate instructions. So these are only two different kinds of instructions. I think we all know multiplication, we all know divisions, but we want to see how this can be done in low-level language. So let's try the multiplication first. Now for the multiplication, we just had one single instruction, which is MUL. That's just one instruction. So it actually multiplies accumulator A and accumulator B as unsigned numbers. So think about this. In general, all the numbers you have in, in, in digital systems, in computers, unless otherwise mentioned, all of those are sign numbers, meaning are represented as sign, okay? But when we do the multiplication using this instruction, it actually treats everything as unsigned, okay? So that means the most significant bit that you have at the left side of A or left side of B are not considered as a sign bit, okay? So once you do the multiplication, the product is stored in the same place. Because basically what you do is you are just doing multiplying A and B and saving it into the D. Now think about this. D is actually the same place where you have A and B, right? So basically multiplication replaces your A and B automatically because you are storing it in the same place, right? But here is the catch. A and B, both of these are 8 bit each, meaning the one byte, but the product is stored as two byte because D is two byte, which is also a good news because a lot of times the multiplication, meaning if you do the multiplication, the product would be much more longer than the number you are using to multiply, right? So in that sense, of course, uh, the 16-bit an answer, meaning 16-bit product may be, uh, seems important to us and useful. So here is a three-line instruction that we wanted to show, make sure, see how the multiplication works. So what we did is in the first line, we loaded FF into accumulator A, right? In the second line, we loaded 14 in accumulator B. Once we did the multiplication, we just wrote MUL because multiplication MUL is an inherent instruction. Yeah. So all you have to do is just write MUL, it automatically multiplies A and B. But what happens after you are done with this multiplication, you know for sure that the product is stored into D. So basically this is what happens. After these three lines, D would have 1, 3, EC, which is actually the multiplication of F, F, N, 1, 4, okay? So that means after this instruction, your accumulator A will have 1, 3, your accumulator B will have EC, okay? Any question? So let's try the division instructions. There are actually two division instructions, okay? So as you can see here, one is IDIV, another one is FDIV. Probably you can guess that IDIV is for integer division and FDIV is for fractional division. But before we understand those two divisions individually, Let's see some of the things that are common in both division instructions. So what happens is if you're doing the division, you D, whatever you have in the D, the content of D is, is divided by the content of X. So that means your D is considered as the dividend, meaning the number which, which will be divided, and the X is considered as divisor meaning the number that you use to divide, right? So, and then once you get the quotient, your quotient is stored into X. So basically, look at this. Your quotient is actually replacing your divisor, right? Because you had divisor in X. Once you get the quotient that is stored into X, and you may have a remainder, which will be stored into D. 
Now we are doing this division just like a third grader. So for an example, let us say if you are dividing 5 by 2, what will be the quotient? 2, right? And what is the remainder? 1. If you divide 5 by 2, it will not be 2.5, it will be just 2 as a, as a quotient, 1 as a remainder, okay? Because we cannot get any fraction. So, this is the very basic of uh, IDIF, but to understand the IDIF, we will first see the IDIF and we will also talk about the FDIF to understand how the fractional division is also done, okay? Now, here are three lines of instructions that we have to understand the IDIF instructions. So, the first one, as you can see, we are loading F, 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 F into D. So, that means our dividend is F, 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 right? And you are loading 2710 in X. So basically, the 2710 is your divisor, right? So once you just type in ID, which is an inherent instruction, FFFF is being divided by 2710, right? But remember, every division, you will have a quotient, you will have a remainder no matter whether the remainder is even 0. There will be a remainder and the remainder will be stored, right? So, if you do this calculation, calculation in your calculator using the programmer mode, what happens is your calculator does not show the remainder. I am talking about the computer calculator. It does not show the remainder. It only shows you the quotient, okay? So, that, so I, I showed you a couple of steps here, calculation steps, which you can use to find out what will be your quotient and what will be your remainder because you also need to know what will be the remainder. So, we use our computer calculator. We first set the calculator into programmer mode. We know how to go to the programmer mode, right? Once you do that, we do this simple calculation. We just do the division first. So, we just do FFFF divided by 2710 and that will give you the quotient. Now, in this case, the quotient is 6. So basically the quotient is 0, 0, 0, 6 because you will be saving, you will be storing the quotient into x, remember? The quotient is also saved into x. But calculator will not tell you what is the remainder, okay? It will just say what is the quotient. And then to find the remainder, we will do one more step. We will do this calculation, dividend minus divisor times quotient. If you do this calculation, you will know the remainder is 159F, okay? Remember, you are doing a subtraction and multiplication and automatically you will do the multiplication first, right? Because the multiplication has the higher precedence than subtraction. So be careful, do the multiplication first and then you do the subtraction. Uh, a lot of times your remainder may be zero, but remember, you still have to save it, right? You still know that your remainder will be stored into accommodate D, right? So this is, this is I think, a uh, simple uh, IDIV instruction. Any question? How to do the IDIV? So if not, let's try a fractional division, which is a little more, more exciting than IDIV. So again, we pretty much do the same steps, but uh, since this is a fractional division, um, it's important to understand how the result is stored, okay? So for an example, at the beginning you store, you say you load your divis, dividend into D, right? Here is my dividend which is 4, 0, 0, 0, 4. And then you store your divisor into X and then you write FD which is an inherent instruction. Now this is, this is actually what we are doing. We are actually dividing 4 by 8. So I'm saying, because remember, as I said, this is a fractional divide. So basically, your divisor will be uh, your, your dividend will be less than or equal to your divisor. Okay, or le it will be less than for sure because you are doing a fractional divide. Okay. Now, what happens if you divide four by eight? It should be 0.5, right? Now, it will be 0.5 in decimal. But how do you represent 0.5 in hex? Because you can write 0.5, right? 
That's what I'm saying. You can just write 0.5 because there is no way you can write a decimal point. But everything you write here is actually the, the following part of the decimal point. Now, how do you write it? To understand how to write it, I showed some calculation steps to understand it. This is how we do it. We first convert, we first set the calculator into programmer mode. Okay? This is our computer calculator. And then we convert the dividend into decimal. In this case, it's the same, right? Because the division is 4, you know, the decimal is also 4 in hex. We then convert our divisor into decimal. That's still same in this case because it's 8, right? It may not be same in other numbers. And we change the mode of calculator into scientific mode. Scientific mode, right? And then you perform the division in decimal. Because now your calculator is in scientific mode and it will show you the answer in fraction, decimal fraction, right? So you know the answer is 0.5. This is pretty easy because you, you know you're dividing 4 by 8, but in a lot of times you need to know what is the fraction. But now, what do you, okay, now once you have the fraction, you know that this is going to be your uh, answer, meaning this is going to be your quotient, and this quotient will be stored into accumulator, I'm sorry, index register X, right? Which is a two byte register, meaning 16 bit register. Now, how 0.5 is stored into a 16 bit register? Let me show you the representation, okay? Now, this is how it represented. So, remember, just let's recall how the binary number is represented and what are the weights of the binary number right after the decimal point. Do you remember how the how the weights of the binary numbers we had. So this is what we had. Before the decimal point, the weights, I'm, I'm only writing the weights, okay? It's 2 to the power 0 and then 2 to the power 1, 2 square, right? All the way, I'm saying, it goes higher and higher, right? 2 square, 2 cube, 2 to the power 4. But right after the decimal point, it was 2 to the power negative 1, and then you start from there, right? 2 to the power negative 2, 2 to the power negative 3, all the way to, you know, every time it actually gets divided by Two more meaning uh, divided by um, two to the power something, right? So this part here is everything you have right after the decimal point. You see what I'm saying? So you can imagine that we have a decimal point here. Look at my look at my laser. This is exactly where you have your decimal point, and this is right after the decimal point. Okay? So basically, the first position here. The weight of this position is 2 to the power negative 1. The weight of the next position is 2 to the power negative 2. And then 2 to the power negative 3, 2 to the power negative 4. It goes all the way up to 2 to the power negative 16. Okay? Now, let's recall what was the answer, meaning what was the quotient? 0.5, right? To write 0.5, all you need is this position to be high, right? Because 0.5 is what? Half, right? So 2 to the power negative 1 is what? Half which is 0.5. So all you need to do is just put a 1 in this position and the rest of it will be all zeros because you got already 0.5. So this is our binary 16 bit. Now if you convert this binary 16 bit, the first 4 bit is what? 1, 0, 0, 0. That is my 8, right, in hex. And then rest of it is 3 zeros. So that's why our quotient will be 8000, zero, 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 which will be stored into x. Because this is actually 0.5 in hex. You see what I'm saying? We just converted that 1, 15, followed by 15 zeros into hex. Okay? Any question? Let's look at some more examples, okay, to understand the FDIF, because this is a little bit more exciting. Let's try another example. Now we'll be still doing the same thing. We are we are first loading two into accumulator D. That means this is my dividend, and then we are loading one zero into X. So that is my divisor, and then we are doing an FD, and we'll we'll follow the same calculation steps to understand what will be the quotient, meaning how the quotient will be represented in our index register X. Again, first change this. Cal change your calculator into programmer's mode. Change the dividend to decimal. Convert the dividend from hex to decimal, which is still 2. Convert the divisor into decimal. So divisor is 1, 0. If you convert it to decimal, it will be 16, right, in decimal. Then change that to scientific mode. So change your calculator. And then perform the decimal division. 
So, you are actually dividing 2 by 16, right? Once you do that, your answer would be 0 0.125. So, that means you are trying to represent 0 0.125 in your binary numbers. Now, let us recall that the weight of the very leftmost bit is 2 to the power negative 1, right? Weight of the next position is 2 to the power negative 2. This position is 2 to the power negative 3, that is exactly what you wanted because 2 to the power negative 3 means 1 over 8, right? Which is actually 0.125. So, all you need to do is just put this position high, everything else remains 0. Now, if you have six, if you have 16 bit of binary, if you convert into hex, you will get 2000, right? Because the leftmost 4 bits are 2 and then everything else zeros, right? If you convert this into hex. So, how many are going to be 2 to the negative 3? Oh, because the, what is the answer here? 0 0.125, right? So, what is 2 to the negative 3? Yeah, th that's how we know it, right? 2 to the power negative 3 is 1 over 2 to the power 2 cube, which is 1 over 8, right? 1 over 8 is 0 0.125, right? You actually have to find it out, I'm saying. Yeah. Over the time, you will be able to calculate it more better. So, basically, all these weights get half every time. See, the first first weight is what? 0 0.5, right? Meaning 1 over 2. Then it becomes 0 0.25, and then 0 0.125. It's actually getting half every time. I'm saying, you know, you can do the calculation. Let's try one more example to understand a little bit more better, okay? Now, I will still have pretty much similar three lines of code. So, in the first line, we are loading A into accumulator D and then second line, we are loading 1, 0 into accumulator index register X. Then, we, we are doing the FDIF, meaning the fractional division. We convert the calculator into programmer's mode. So, the first number, which is the dividend in our case is we are converting that into decimal, which becomes, which is, which is 10. And the second number, which is a divisor, we are converting that number into decimal, which is 16. That means, once you convert your calculator to, for just one, once you change your calculator from a programmer to scientific mode, you will be dividing 10 by 16, right, in decimal, which will give you 0.625. Now, this is the tricky part. How do you represent 0 0.625? Because look at this carefully. The first position right after the decimal point, which has the highest weight, you had 0 0.5, right? But the number you are trying to represent is 0 0.625, which is even more than 0 0.5. So, now this is how you do it. Once you represent it, you know that you, you can have more than one once, right? So, the very left position is what? 0 0.5. Then this is 0.25 and this is 0.125, right? Now think about this. If you have 0.5 and if you add 0 0.6 to 1 to 5, that makes it 6 to 5, right? So the, basically you have to make this one and this one. So both of these will make uh, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 8, which is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.125 to make it 0.625. It's actually a lot of precision. So basically you can represent a lot bigger uh, fractions. So basically, I think I, I think one of the slides I mentioned that this is the range you can do. See how 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 uh, big the range is. So you can start from zeros when you have all zero, and using this 16 bit, you can go all the way up to 0 0.999998. Okay, but some of the in some cases you have to think a little bit to see. I'm sorry to see which positions. You need to make one to get your correct uh, fraction that you got from the decimal division. And this is your quotient. So this time my quotient is in, in the very left left bit left byte would be I'm saying left uh, hex digit would be one zero one zero which is a. This is my a right, and then rest is just three zeros. So the result will be say I'm saying the x, the content of the index register x will be a000, okay, which is 0 0.625 in decimal. Any question?
We may have question, but uh, let's try the quizzes. So we actually have two quizzes for this part. We, we have just like three instructions, but to understand these instructions, we'll do a little bit more uh, practice, and we'll also try some previous instructions here. So that's why we have just two quiz, quiz 9 and quiz 10. So let's go to the quiz section and try these two quizzes, which are based on multiplication and two different types of divisions.